I'm going to show you Gboard, the keyboard app from Google. It works on Android and iOS and has a ton of cool stuff to make typing faster, easier and a lot more fun. I'll be checking out some of my favorite things about it today so you can see how it works. Full stop. That's Gboard for you. I can talk, I can swipe and it just works effortlessly. So what I'll recommend you do is go over to your Play Store or your App Store and download Gboard. And once you've downloaded it, you're going to need to go into your phone settings and find your keyboard. So you can either probably type it at the top here, keyboard, and it'll take you to your keyboard system on screen keyboard and you want to make sure whatever you've got there is selected as Gboard. You also want to turn on Google Voice Typing. Once you've got all that set up, what I would recommend you do is go to a Notepad app. I'm using Google Keep on my Android device. It's, it's excellent for note taking. And you want to set up the keyboard. So currently, this is the default look and feel of the keyboard. It, it looks pretty much the same as the standard keyboard on your device, but there are subtle differences. So for example, let's say I type in here, how are you? You notice there's no question mark on the keyboard. Now that's a bit frustrating. Yes, I could go into the one, two, three year and then select one and then do a question mark. That will work. And I'm sure a lot of people do that. But for me, that's too much effort. That's taking too long. I want the question mark to be on the keyboard. So what I need to do is go into the cog and that's going to take me into the settings or preferences. And in preferences, I want to turn on the number row and the emoji switch key. So if I go back, you can now see that there is a row of numbers. This is a lot easier than having to hold keys down or go into a sub menu to get the numbers. They're all there right in front of you. I've also got the emoji icon. It has its own dedicated um, icons. And there's obviously stickers and there's GIFs and there's the old school icons for people that are still on old phones like Nokia's and Motorola's. So that's that's super useful. Also in preferences, you want to be turning on long press for symbols. This is what I'm talking about. So long press for symbols is going to show me now a question mark behind a letter. And I want to set the delay down to 140, 150, around about that. I want it to be super quick. So when I type, so now you can see all the little symbols that are behind the letters. And to access them, you just type in, so let's say I'm gonna type in an email address. Test at, I'm just holding down the A for milliseconds and it appears with the at sign. So super useful. And if I say, how are you now? How are you? I just hold down the M for milliseconds and the question marks appear. So yes, that's that's a lot better. If I go back into, into preferences, is there anything else that stands out? Pop up on key press, that's useful if you type in and you've seen the letters appearing as you type, that's great. You might want vibration as you type in to feel the keys. It's not something that I enjoy or sound on key press, it's just annoying. Um, you can also change the layout. I'll show you this a little later. Themes, that's one of the great things about this app is that you can theme your keyboard. You can have solid colors, you can have landscapes, light gradient and dark gradient, and you can download, there's loads of them you can download. If you hit that little download button, look, it's opened up a whole bunch of extras. Um, Hit the download on there and hit the download on here. And there's a whole bunch of extra ones. But let's say you want to use your own image. So I've been creating a whole bunch of AI um, drawings recently. Um, here's one that I want to use, this little rabbit playing tennis. So let's just, oh, not that one, actually. Let's go back. Let's use this one. Cute little rabbit with all these rabbit friends in the background. So I just center it, do a next, there we go. 
I like that. I can now turn on the borders or turn them off. I actually prefer not having the borders on because I can see the image. So now if I go back, there's my little picture in the background. So another great feature of this keyboard. If I go into text correction, you probably want all those options turned on because it's just going to help you when you're typing or swiping. And also it has its own built-in spell checker and grammar. So very, very useful when you type in and if you've made an error, it highlights the word um, with a little red line underneath. And if it's a blue line underneath, it actually makes a suggestion for another word. So uh, yeah, very useful. Voice typing though, is the best feature of Gboard. You can quickly just hit that little microphone button and it switches your um, your your voice to text and, and it's simple, it really works well. Have everything on here. Uh, the only thing I'd say is go into manage personalization and turn off usage statistics. You don't wanna be sending Google your information, so turn that off. Personalize for you is a great feature. It actually learns this keyboard, how you type, how you spell, um, how you speak, and obviously it, it improves the way it displays the text on the screen. Improve for everyone, you can turn that on and off if you like. There's nothing else in there. And it's got a built-in clipboard, which is useful. Um, you can go in here and turn on various options. I, I turned on the save recent screenshots because I take a lot of screenshots on my phone as well. So I want access to those screenshots when I'm using my keyboard. So that's that. So now what other things are useful in this keyboard? So if you look on the screen here, this little icon, this round icon with four little squares, if you tap on that, it actually opens up another section of features. And one of them that I really enjoy is the scan text. This one over here, scan text. And what it does is it opens up your camera. Now let's say you've got some text that you want to scan and, and um, copy into your message. You can highlight or open the camera over the text, press the scan button, select the text and insert and boom you've inserted all that text into your editor very very useful another very very useful feature is see how it's capitalized december now let's say i don't want december to capitalize like that i just want the first letter so all i do is i press the shift up arrow key and it puts it into lowercase and then i do it one more time and it capitalizes the first letter or if I want it all capitalized, I can just double, I'll just click through it until I get back to it. But that's very useful. Um, another thing that's useful is there's an option in here to edit text. So it brings up this little cursor keyboard. And look, you can now highlight stuff just by using the arrow keys. It's a precise editor. Because sometimes when you've got a lot of text, you, you struggle to select the text that you want or your screen flicks up too quickly or your screen might not be big enough. It's very small area. So you want a precise copy and paste. So yeah, you can precisely select the letters right down to the last character, which is absolutely amazing. And then you can do a copy and I can go down to the bottom and I can select paste and boom, it's pasted it. Very, very useful. If I want to quickly get up to the very top of the page, because I've got a lot of writing here, you can see lots of writing. All I do is I, I tap on this little button at the bottom here and it takes me right up to the top of the page. I want to click that button to go right to the bottom of the page. Again, super quick and useful. What else does it do? I can um, go into this thing and I can resize the keyboard. I can make it bigger or smaller depending on how much real estate I've got. So you can now see the picture and everything is a lot bigger and it's clearer. It's also got Google Translate. So now you don't need to go and download another app for Google Translate. Yeah, you can just type in the message that you want in the foreign language that you, that you are in. So for example, I'm in the Netherlands or I'm in South Africa and I'm speaking Afrikaans or somebody speaking Afrikaans to me. They've got my phone, they're typing in the message and it automatically translates while they type who can dit met yo how are things going with you and that is correct 
So that's another useful feature of this Gboard. But it, it is really the voice that tops this off. So that's Gboard. Hopefully you saw something you liked that can really help you out when you text in or write in. If you have any questions, just leave a comment and I'll get back to you. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.